Hello, so we're going to have a look at this exam question and this exam question is focused around the topic of assessing a country as a production location. So the question is, Brawnby could keep producing in China or move production back to the UK. Evaluate these two options and recommend which one is more suitable. So obviously from reading the case study, we can see that Brawnby has a uh, offshored its production to China. So therefore, a relevant way to start our answer can be by defining offshoring. Then we can focus on why we would choose, uh, why the business should uh, choose to remain in China. So if we focus on China, first of all, and then later on in our essay, we can, can look at the UK and then ultimately we can come to a decision. So the main reason that the uh, firm should continue to uh, have production taking place in China is due to the significantly lower wage costs that can be uh, achieved in China. So in China, there's reduced wages. Uh, and in particular, in the case study, we're told that uh, unit costs are 60% lower. Obviously, what that means uh, for the business uh, is that they can therefore achieve an increased uh, profit margin. due to uh, the lower wages allowing them to keep remain if they keep their prices the same they will obtain a greater profit margin or those lower wage wage costs could allow them therefore to decrease their prices obviously decreasing their prices we'd expect to see an increase in quantity demanded uh, and therefore that should increase their total revenue uh, and this would be particularly useful because those lower prices could help them to compete with electronic games, which have obviously which have seen an increase increase in demand. So obviously, again, from the case study, we saw that the uh, train sets were losing out to electronic games and also uh, people weren't buying the new sets due to uh, more people being inclined to purchase uh, the secondhand sets instead. So obviously, if we have lower wage costs in China, then hopefully we can pass those lower wage wage costs of the supplier onto the consumer via lower prices and therefore we'd expect hopefully to see an increase in quantity demanded for the train sets and hopefully that should therefore increase the total revenue for the business however so a bit of evaluation with regards to this this point uh what it does say in the case study that obviously wages are on the increase so actually wages are rising uh quickly in recent times in China. So actually the Chinese wages are rising and therefore we're going to lose of so therefore we may lose that competitive edge in the future due to increased costs so the wages rising in china may actually lead the business to losing that competitive edge uh obviously because the wages will result in higher costs from the supplier in china and therefore they may actually have to increase their price and as a result they may see quantity demanded fall so actually we've got a potential issue here with regards to uh operating in china that actually in the future we could face potential issues uh, and therefore, we wouldn't want to go to want to stay in China. Another reason why we should stay in China is obviously it mentions in the case study that there is a half a million pound exit fee. So if we want to leave China now, it says there's 18 months left on the contract. Uh, and if that contract isn't honoured by the, the by the train for train set firm, uh, then they would have to pay half a million pound exit fee. This is a particular problem for this firm 
because they've already accrued a uh, £530,000 loss. Uh, if I just re return to the case, that £530,000 loss was this year. So obviously a half a million pound exit fee is a large cash outflow. And obviously that probably will lead to a negative net cash flow. That negative net cash flow could ultimately lead uh, to insolvency. Uh meaning basically the business will be unable to repay debts and ultimately could end up in uh, business failure. So obviously by remaining in China, we wouldn't have to pay that exit fee and therefore it would prevent So remaining in China would prevent prevent this however we need to again need to evaluate this point obviously we need to consider here the short term versus long term so obviously staying in china we wouldn't incur that uh, half a million pound exit fee however uh, in the long term it may be better uh, to return to the UK and actually face. So maybe better to face large exit fee in the short term to gain long term benefits of producing in the UK. So here we've got quite a good point to think about that obviously, yes, it'd be a lot of money, but if we can uh, if we can deal with that large cost initially, there actually may be some long-term benefits of producing in the UK. And we can that leads us nicely into looking at reasons of why uh, the company should maybe move production back to the UK. So just move that out of the way. So let's have a look at arguments why we should move back to the UK. Uh, so we could use the idea of being made in Britain as a USP. So if we actually refer again back to the case study, it mentions very early on in the case study uh, that uh, Brawnby are a toy company specialising in good quality, quintessentially British model railways. So obviously by being made in uh, the UK, it adds to the idea that obviously... Uh, That adds to that British element and gives it that real U U US USP. Uh, and hopefully that USP um, should hopefully increase the brand awareness that everyone's aware that this is a, a real British uh, product that everyone wants. And hopefully, therefore, that should increase demand uh, for the product and hopefully should lead to an increase in total revenue because obviously that USP would draw people in uh, that obviously it's made in Britain now. However, there are issues with obviously moving things back to the UK. Obviously, the wage costs would be higher. But obviously, then obviously, the obviously wage costs in the UK would obviously be higher uh, than uh, China. But so profit margins may decrease. But the key issue here, as we see in the case study, the price elasticity of demand figure is given to us 
in the case study of minus 0.6. What that indicates is that the train sets are price inelastic. And what that means is we could pass those higher prices on to consumers. So increased price to reflect increased costs. What that would lead to is it would lead to a less than proportional decrease in quantity demanded. And that, le that less than proportional decrease in quantity demanded with those higher prices should actually lead to an increase in total revenue. So actually, it's not all a bad thing, even though obviously going to the UK, it's going to cost us more and maybe a reason we should stay in China. The price elasticity of the demand of the product, as told, us, as told by the case study, is minus 0.6, indicating that the train sets are price inelastic. Therefore, we could pass those higher, higher costs onto consumers via higher prices. And what that would lead to is it would lead to a less than proportional decrease in quantity demanded. And as a result, our total revenue should actually uh, increase. So actually, we've got a really strong argument here uh, for stay, uh, bringing production back uh, to the UK. One of the other main ish, uh, reasons we should come back to the UK is obviously uh, ch uh, having the operations in China, there were many delivery delivery issues in particular i think they had an issue over the christmas period and actually most of the products arrived in uh january rather than uh in time for christmas so some specific facts with regards to that so only six out of ten orders were received on time and what that what what the issue was as we said is uh there was lack of supply to meet demand and as a result business was unable to maximize uh, they were unable to maximize sales and and therefore production should occur in the UK to help maximise sales due to no delivery issues. Obviously, producing in the UK, hopefully everything, therefore, is on time. They're not hanging around waiting for orders. They have the supply. They can meet the demand. And as a result, they can maximise the sales for the business. So it's a real positive element of, uh, with regards to producing in the UK. You can meet the, the demand uh, easily and there aren't those going to be those issues with regards to uh, delivery. However, we should be cautious that obviously with regards to these delivery issues these delivery issues uh, have only been specific to one supplier so not all suppliers in china are going to have delivery issues uh, and maybe actually the business rather than uh, coming to the uk they should consider another chinese supplier obviously benefiting from the uh, lower wage costs in China could consider alternative Chinese supplier to benefit from low wages. So actually what we may want to do is we may say, well, actually, staying in China is is the best option. Uh, but we should what we should do is we should look for another supplier because the supplier we're using at the moment is having significant delivery issues and is ultimately affecting the performance of the business. So what we've let's just recap what we've what we've done so far. Then, so we've had a, we've defined offshoring to start our answer off. We've looked at reasons why we should stay in China and obviously criticise them as well about potential 
uh, reasons maybe why we should actually consider about going to the UK. So first of all, we said that we should stay in China due to the low wages in China. And also we should stay in China because it costs an awful lot of money to move production to the UK due to an exit fee. And that wasn't really uh, viable with the current financial position the business was in. But we did consider that obviously the financial position maybe negatively impact in the short run, but there may be some long-term benefits uh, that could be achieved by moving production to the UK, which we discussed later in our essay. And obviously we highlighted that wages were rising in China, so China may not have been the best option. So then we moved on to looking at the UK. We said actually bringing production back to the UK would give it a real USP, the idea it's made in Britain and the idea that the train sets were quintessentially British in the first place would really add to that. And obviously it would help the brand stand out. People would be aware that brand is made in Britain. I really want to back that brand. And hopefully, therefore, we'd see increased demand for the products and hopefully total revenue would therefore rise. We did highlight, though, that the issue of moving production back to the UK would lead to higher wage, wage costs but the, and therefore profit margins uh, would be lower. But we did indeed recognise that actually those wage higher wage costs could be passed on to the cons uh, consumer due to the price elasticity of demand being minus uh, 0 0.6 indicating its price inelastic and actually we'd see a less than proportional decrease in quantity demanded and we could therefore actually see an increase in total revenue. And the other strong reason for moving production back to the UK was that obviously there were many delivery issues with regards to China and obviously not orders weren't arriving on time and therefore sales weren't being maximised. Obviously moving back to the UK we could make sure we had the necessary supply to meet demand and obviously maximise our sales. But we did recognise that actually this was only one supplier in China and actually other suppliers in China could actually be a lot more reliable and make sure they did deliver on time uh, and as well as delivering on time, we can also get the benefits of the lower cost of production in China. So it isn't just necessarily that we should move to the UK. There are other options to consider. So finally, we just make, must, come, must come up with a judgment. And our judgment should simply just answer the question, should they have production in China or the UK? And ultimately, you should just explain why. And that should just come from what you have done in your essay. And there is no right or wrong answer. And then you need to consider some depends on factors. So what you may wish to consider is, well, actually, the most important thing isn't production location but uh, consumer tastes and preferences so actually obviously it's important to consider where to produce the product and obviously it's a, a real strategic decision that the business must make however what's most important is what the consumers want Obviously, we've had the issue that consumers are more interested in second-hand one uh, model uh, model train sets, and actually, they're more interested in electronic products. Uh, so, if consumer tastes and preferences improve, then obviously that's fantastic for the success of the business. So, actually, we may want to consider the most important fact isn't production location, but customer tastes and preferences. If increased demand for new sets that should lead to increased sales and improve the overall uh, position of the business uh, also we must consider that the success of the uh, whether sh whether whether they should be in china or the uk may depend upon the exchange rate so we see in the case study that the graph demonstrates that there's been a decrease in the value of the pound uh, so what we therefore know the acronym to be with regards to that is WIPIDEC weak pound imports de dearer exports cheaper so that decrease in the value of the pound was increased cost uh, so that 
So the value of the pound falling obviously made imports dearer. So when we were purchasing the supplies from China, it was costing uh, uh, Brombe uh, more due to the pound uh, falling in value. And obviously there was therefore an argument to bring uh, production back to the UK, obviously for the because the costs, uh, it's more expensive to import the uh model train sets from china uh, but we obviously we must consider that exchange rates do fluctuate so it depends on the exchange rate the exchange rate had fallen and therefore that was increasing costs but pound could strengthen and if the pound does strengthen then obviously we think about the acronym spiced and what that means is that uh import would be cheaper and obviously that for therefore that is beneficial because that could allow the brawn to either lower their prices or it could allow them to have higher profit margins uh, thank you for uh listening uh, and watching uh i uh i look forward to seeing you again soon